thinking what to do. And you're going to have a, you're going to have the cow jumped over the moon again. <clears throat> okay, there you go. Thank you, Carter. You were very well behaved and part of this whole thing. Jenna, great having your brother Ben up here. Yeah, you can have two if you want. Jay, thank you. Jay, thank you. There you go. All right. Okay. Colin, I appreciate you being up here, even if you did sit over there and act like you weren't listening, but you were listening, weren't you? Yeah, okay, good. See you. All right, Father Rick, you you have the floor. Let us be quiet in the presence of God. Amen. On Friday, the 11th of July, at 3.30 in the morning, yes, 3.30 in the morning, 13 of us from this parish gathered at the United Airlines ticket counter to begin our journey to Honduras and to a mission of the Episcopal Church in Honduras that's known by the overarching name of Projectos del Hogar de Amor y Esperanza, the home of love and hope. This organization sponsors four schools, an elementary school, and then a farm school, and a technical school and a school for girls that you graduate from the elementary school and go to one of these. These schools are for disadvantaged, abandoned, and otherwise hopeless children of Honduras. The 13, actually 15 of us, two, two others met us there were in Talanga, which is about an hour northeast, northwest of um, Tegucigalpa, which is the capital of Honduras. It's in beautiful land. The boys that are at the Escuela, La Escuela Agricola, are poor. I want you to imagine in your life the worst financial economic situation you've ever experienced. The worst. Imagine that with me for just a moment. Now, I want you to multiply that by 1,000. And that's the poverty that these people who were the hands and the feet of St. Matthew's and of Jesus and of the Church of God encountered. But it was a poverty that was not limited to finances. The poverty of spirit the poverty of hope, the poverty of vision, a poverty of possibility. That's poor. I want to invite now uh, four of the members of our mission team that were there representing you to come forward. Grayson and Camden Owen, if you will come forward, please. Uh, John Lewis, if you'll come forward, and uh, Roy Poe. Stand up here, if you will, please, and face the congregation. I'm going to ask that um, 
Hamden, either you or Grayson go first to share part of your experience, and if you would do so from the pulpit. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Como estas? Bien, gracias. My name is Camden Owen, and I'm so thankful to be a part of the St. Matthews family. <sighs> this past week, 12 others and myself ventured to a little farm in Talonga, Honduras. Mixed feelings were in my head, and I didn't really know what to expect on the trip. But by the end of the week, I didn't want to leave. It was interesting to see how other people of the world live, to see someone so content and grateful with so little, and us to complain about not having enough. This past week was the most humbling experience I've ever been through, and I am forever changed by that. Our mission was not only to build benches, hang clotheslines, or do typical farm work such as cleaning the pig stalls and milking cows, but most importantly, to show the Lord's love to the boys of El Hogar Escuela Agriculture, Agricultura, <laughs> Agriculture School. Our team had a Eucharist on Thursday night, and I was floored when Father Rick told us to go around and say what we were thankful for from God. I don't like being put on the spot, but the words came to me when it was my turn. I thank God for giving us this great opportunity to be at the farm and for allowing us to form such great relationships with people regardless of the differences we had, such as not being able to speak a lick of Spanish. Mm. So, through the countless games of Uno, Katy Perry constantly being played, the, gin the ginormous amount of frijoles, which are beans, consumed, and the manual labor that was done, our team became a part of the Hel El Hogar family a family that will always be to me one of the most important families I have, a family that I already miss, and a family that I can't wait to go back to see. Thank you all so much for supporting us on our journey. I hope the rest of you can experience this wonderful opportunity that will always hold a special place in my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Jason? Good morning. In case any of y'all didn't know who I am, I'm Grayson Owen. This past week, myself and 12 other members of St. Matthew's traveled to a small school outside Tolonga, Honduras. If anyone wanted to know, Honduras is in Central America and is a, considered a third world country. Throughout the week, our mission team, including myself, worked alongside with students of El Hogar School of Agriculture. While we were there, three things stood out to me. How the boys are happy with their lives, how myself and probably others take simple things for granted here in the States, and how close us members of the church bonded. During the debriefing, debriefings held at night, Father Rick asked us where we saw Jesus. I'd like to say I saw Jesus in the boys' faces with how happy they are along with so little they have. The trip wasn't about what we did in Honduras, but the experiences we had. Thank you to all who supported us before and during the trip. Thank you. Thank you, Grayson. Roy? <clears throat> Wait a minute. Don't do it. Yeah. That's a little something we taught the boys. <laughs> Um, you know, my name's Roy Poe, for those of y'all that didn't know, and I was uh, provided the honor and privilege to accompany a St. Matthew's team to Honduras. Uh, two words <clears throat> that come to my mind, equipo and familia, that's team and family. So at this moment, I'd like to ask all you guys to stand up. Choir, limbs, acolytes, priests. And I want all you guys to give yourselves a hand because we are all one big team and family. <clears throat> <clears throat> the 
the two most the, the two most popular words at the school we were at. The first one was, as you could imagine, hola. A general greeting, hello. Easy to say for us dumb Americans. And too bad she's not here because somebody that absolutely was instrumental in our trip was his daughter, Carly. The second most popular word in Honduras on this week was Carly. <laughs> uh, her, her undying or un unwavering um, translations, no matter how simple or how complex you're trying to communicate with one of the boys. And it was what was cool is we developed our own individual unique international charades. Uh, and it's amazing how well you can communicate when, you really, when you're communicating with your heart. Um, you know, as, uh, as, as you heard, we had a meeting every night and with Father Rick, and uh, the questions were, <clears throat> where did you see uh, Jesus? There was, the, the answers were anything ranging from uh, a calf, a newborn calf, to um, a beheaded, bleeding, quivering chicken, and Carrie Holcomb will elaborate later on that. She was our chicken killing queen. I think uh, at, her, at her hand, about 275 chickens died. So um, I want to share a little bit. Uh, I know that everybody here should be at least somewhat familiar with the parable of the prodigal son. And I'm going I'm to read a little bit from the end of it, but just in case you're not, you have a wealthy man. You have a, two sons, young son, older son. Young son wants his inheritance, and he takes off to a distant place. Maybe doesn't act quite right, but figures out he's made mistakes. He comes back, um, and any time you have a celebration, a fattened calf is killed. With that, sorry, uh, I want to read um, just a few verses. And you'll understand in the end why I'd like to read these verses. It says, Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, What was going on? And the servant replied, Your brother was back. And your father has killed the fattened calf. And we are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry. And he wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, All these years... I have slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing that you told me to do. And in all the time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet this other son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes. You celebrate him by killing the fattened calf. And his father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and came back to life. You know, I, I've thought about that and I understand the metaphors behind it. I understand that the dad is God and I understand that the sons are us. And I understand no matter how bad we screw up, God's there for us. It seems like as I get older, I tend to try to live my life a little better. And I've always wondered, is this it right here? It's coming to church every Sunday, being a Sunday school teacher, being an usher, working with VBS, working with the EYC, working with the women's group. Am I truly enjoying the fattened calf? Because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm trying as hard as I can. We're never going to be perfect. But God's going to make up that difference when, 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 when we fall short. And I always thought, wow, you know, is this it? Is this, is this what the fattened calf's like? I'm not bitter like the older son. But I can honestly say for one week of my life, I enjoyed the fattened calf. And I encourage each one of you to, to take a bite. And hold us, the people that went to a standard, so that a week from now, we're not the people we were a week ago. I don't think anybody will be. In 9-11, all the marquees you saw said, God bless the USA. Pray for America. 
30 days later, those same marquees said, buy three tires, get the fourth one free. Buy one Mac, Big Mac, get one Big Mac free. Hold this, the people that went to a little higher standard and don't let them forget what they talk about up here. Because I, I don't think you can experience something like this and ever be the same person. And I want to close with one, one, with one small story. There was one boy there. First off, everybody had our favorites. And I met one, his name's Marlon, and I would have brought him home in my suitcase if I could have gotten away with it. Um, I'm going to go to his graduation next year when he graduates from this school, but he's not the one I'm going to talk about because I really couldn't hold it together talking about him. Kid named Michael. Michael had cerebral palsy. Can't run real well. Has one arm that's useless. First thing we get there, first thing I do is I got a bag full of soccer balls. I got a bag full of footballs. I pick out a Nerf football. I'm not comfortable with the soccer ball. I head out to the courtyard, and there's Michael. You can see his one arm drawn up like this to his body. He can't use it. And I act like I'm going to throw him the football. Without shying away from it, he takes his good arm and says, I throw it to him. He grabs it with his good arm against his body and catches it. Now, you got to realize, young boys, a couple of his buddies are over on the side. I speak absolutely no, no Spanish at this time. Really, still don't speak it now. I know a few words. But you hear them over there on the sides. And I know what they're saying. Oh, look at him. Oh, one arm Michael's catching the football, y'all. Look how goofy he looks. Because you can tell. So he throws me the football back. I turn and throw the football to the other kid. And I'm saying, Lord, please let his hands not be as good as his feet because they're fantastic with a soccer ball. Sure enough, ball falls to the ground. I pick it, he throws it back, I throw it to the next kid. And I'm not throwing it in there hard. And he breaks it too and he doesn't catch it. And I throw it back to Michael. Michael catches it, he's two for two. And for that moment, he got to shine a little bit. And he, and he gave them a little bit of crow back. And I, I, and I still don't know what he said, but in my mind he said, What's up? <laughs> Get you some of this. You know, so, but with that, um, I just want to say thanks for all your guys' support. And trust me, take a bite of the fat and calf. It'll change you. Thank you, Roy. John? <clears throat> Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <clears throat> We all went to Honduras to unconditionally give of ourselves and to share God's love, and we did that. But we all unexpectedly received far, far more, and you really can't understand or explain the spiritual high we all came back with. And I believe we all want to go do it again. We hope that St. Matthew's will take on this mission as a recurring annual trip, uh, support for an outreach program because it is, it's tremendous what happens. Uh, with that, Father Steve, please come, come up here. Please accept this as a small token of our thanks to all the whole Southside Matthews and all the support provided for us on this trip. May I say just one thing? Um, when I first started advertising this uh, mission opportunity, I said something to you all repeatedly. Do you remember what it was? It will change your life. You've seen changed lives today. Yeah? Surely?
Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say a few words. Uh, thank you for the gift. It's very nice. This is your gift as much as it is mine. Uh, mission is the heart of what we do as uh, Christians. We move out and we move back in and all of us stay behind. We're praying. We're waiting for you to come back and we're glad you did what you did. And remember, uh, the mission keeps going. Right, that's the thing. We don't worship the mission. We don't do that. Uh, when we say goodbye at 4 o'clock in the morning or 3.30 about, I think Roy was the last one to leave and we said goodbye to him about 10 till 4. Uh, there were some goodbyes hugging and everybody celebrating. And I didn't get out because when I go to prison or anywhere and we finish, I'm coming back here because we got work to do here. And that mission was great, and, and we're grateful that we got an opportunity to do that. But the, what I always say when I leave prison is, let's get on with the next thing, because we got more fish to fry, and, and we're going we're gonna to fry some more fish. And it's all because of our working together and the Holy Spirit guiding us and Jesus Christ at the center that it happens. So celebrate in what we have.